the more you know, the better you can bet on it, which is brought to you by Warhorse Sportsbook, the best place in Nebraska place for sports bets. No bets, no glory. Make sure you get to warhorsecasino.com for all the promotions and fun things they have going on at Warhorse Sportsbook. DB, we were talking about something earlier about kind of managing emotions and the way that that impacts things in a in a way that's really difficult to quantify. Yeah. Right. And I'm thinking to myself while we're having that discussion, and we were talking about other stuff, so I didn't want to bring it up at the time because I didn't want to derail. <laughs> I, I actually showed some rare self control there to not derail a conversation. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, how much does that apply to different levels of football? Right. Because I think we assume the older you get, you get into professional ranks and things like that, the more that's mitigated. And maybe that's true to a certain extent, but then I kind of look at what's going on in the NFL mm. and I go, man, there's some variables here that I, that a lot of people certainly are not able to account for. And I saw one. Yeah, go ahead. At the end of, I saw one in an interview. I know you make fun of me for always watching interviews <laughs> at the end of your Niners game. Yeah. And it's, and it's definitely an intangible variable. Mm-hmm. It was George Kittle's level of excitement, mm. not for scoring a touchdown, but for talking about the aura and mentality that Christian McCaffrey brings to the table. Mm. So there's an emotional boost when you've got a guy that you know is going to is work. A dude. Yep, is going to work every day. Yeah, even as a pro. Yeah. That's in, that's a that's a good tidbit. It's incredible. I also and this is Kittle, who could make the case for being the the goat currently. I, I think he's the best overall tight end in the league. Currently. And I get it, Kelsey fans are gonna come for you, but I Kittle mean, Kittle does some stuff that Kelsey doesn't do. He Kittle's incredible. He's so good, and he, Kelsey's great. Don't get me wrong, but like Kittle does some stuff Kelsey doesn't do. So and he's asked to do some. I'm stuff. I'm like at at the pro level. Yeah. That's this a big happened. deal. Yeah. He was giddy. Yeah. You want another one? Yeah. Actually, from that same game, there's a guy that I think emotion matters to a lot. Who? Baker. Oh, yeah. The Baker's emotional state. And he's kind of unflappable, too. Yes. <laughs> right? But he's like, got kind this of... This dude could play like dog, dog, and, boo-boo. And he'll keep coming out there. Like, how else does a guy like Baker Mayfield last year sign on a Tuesday, play on a Thursday, and lead to a game-winning drive for the Rams? Like, that dude's emotional stability, despite being kind of a fiery guy. Yeah. Like, you think there's a little, you think there's a little coach rule in, in Baker Mayfield? Yeah. Like, emotionally stable, but like a fiery competitive like, guy. You know, you're going to get Vesuvius one day. Yeah. And, you know, next time it's like, hey, man, would you like some tea for your son? <laughs> but it's all because I'm competitive. Like, yes. I manage it yeah. differently. But here, here's the other thing. I'll give you a couple more. Where, even as a pro... Um, where I think Dan Campbell's temperament matters. Mm, yeah. no, no other team is winning that game against the Texans other than the Chiefs. 100%. But the Chiefs, Chiefs probably do it because Mahomes didn't throw five picks. But well, it, even, it, even with that. Mahomes has given it to the other team a yeah. fair amount this year. He has. But it d- doesn't change the way they play. Yeah. Didn't change the way golf played either. And most of that comes from the temperament of their head coach. So you know what's really weird about that? No. Is I agree with you. But Campbell and Reed are very different personalities. It's so, okay, that's beautiful. Yeah, you're 100% right. But do you know what it is? They still have their own their team's personality. Yes. like they're, they're Campbell's team. an outwardly fighter, mm-hmm. an ankle biter, bite your kneecaps. He's kind of quirky. Yeah. Want to compete. Yeah. Right? And he's can, a chip on the shoulder guy. And, and, and Detroit was won three games three years ago. Mm-hmm. So they're they like. They needed that. They're like, five picks? Man, that's nothing. We had three wins three yeah, years ago. We were ago. three and 13. We, we couldn't care less. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Five picks used to be the let's just in the same rate. vein, but differently. Yeah. They're like Kansas City's like we got Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. Been there, done that. Hey, we, we've been down by double digits in the my Super Bowl. Expression a couple times. Don't change, and we still went. Like so, yeah. it's still their personality, just vastly different ways. I'll give you another one. Yeah, where it matters in the NFL. Sean Payton made it so personal with Russell Wilson. Hmm. That he ate an unprecedented amount of money for a salary cap? Because he couldn't figure it out. Because he didn't want to deal with it. Yeah. 
the same guy a year later, a year older, goes to a different organization and he flourishes, and you're not going to tell anybody. Oh, For a man. guy that's not a quarterback guru, by the way, or, quarter, you know, a guy that's not an offensive yeah. savant, whatever. I mean, <laughs> whatever you want to, whatever you think Sean Payton is, yeah. Mike yeah. Tomlin is not considered that 100%. in league circles. Right. So you would think out of the two guys, Payton would be able to figure it out. I remember that was the and, narrative and, before. And the NFL culture still matters. And culture at the end of the day is largely about managing emotions. That's I mean, managing Russell's brand takes some doing. And you know what's been a lot quieter? His brand. Russell. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to hear your whole let's forge. Steel City. Let's forge. <laughs> you know? Like that stuff matters, man. So here's my question. I want to go back to Sean Payton and Russell Wilson here for a second. Because I think there's a way. This is it is I'm gonna bring this around kind of in a strange way. But do you because Russell Wilson was there pre-existing to Sean Payton, right? Yeah. He had kind of all these. It was an okay year. And he, but he had kind of all these trappings that he was allowed to have before Sean Payton got there. And Sean Payton got there in the offseason, and he's like, man. He had the office. He had the staffers. He had whatever, right? Your own personal people. They got a, they're in a guys-to-go situation. So I'm, I'm wondering here, in a situation where we're at Nebraska, some of these guys – and their habits pre-exist Coach Rule, is there a certain point, and are we at that point, where you're like, hey, if you're not on board for the way we want to do things, like, this probably isn't, isn't the place for you. for you anymore. Yeah. Which is kind of weird in the Russell Wilson situation, because it seemed like he was maybe sort of willing to acquiesce some of those things. Mm. And so that's why, that's why you kind of have to have some self-awareness if you're the coach, too, right? Because I'd like to think Matt Rule has the self-awareness to be able to identify the guys that are willing to get on board versus the guys that maybe aren't. Like an older guy that we've seen play really, really well this year, John Bullock. Yeah. Play really, really well this year. If I had to guess, that seems like a guy that's on board. Yep. Right? There's other guys that I would point to and go, I don't know. I don't necessarily, like maybe they're a good player, maybe they're a good guy. Not that they're toxic or anything like that, but maybe they've got a little too much baggage to fully be able to get on the train, you know? And, and that, I think, that kind of matters, too. Like, there has to be self-awareness on each side of the equation for it to work. Mm-hmm. And it, there may have been some self-awareness. We always put I always put it on. I'm not going to say we. I always put it on Russell Wilson because I think he's cheesy and I don't like him very much. <laughs> he just bothers me. <laughs> right? There's nothing wrong with him. He just bothers yeah, me. Yeah, like, he's, yeah. a, he's trying to do too much. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's maybe that wasn't a Russell Wilson problem. Maybe that's a hey, Russ was willing to acquiesce, and Sean Payne's just like, yeah, I just don't want to deal with it. So he's going to eat seventy million dollars. Yeah, I don't just like Tomlin because he's a Steelers coach. I like Tomlin because Tomlin says things like, "I tell our staff, I don't want to hear about what players can't do." Like where he said, "This guy's too Hold slow." Or say he that can- again. Say that. Say it one more time. He doesn't like hearing about what players can't do. Who else do we know like that? No, I know. Okay, so they it's know like, what that is about. He goes, "That's a, that's a coaching issue, mm-hmm. right?" Coach Rule said something the other day or yesterday, and I again I couldn't do cookies because it wasn't slick out. I may find somebody's grass or yard or something. But he goes, <laughs> he said something um, to, to the to the effect of, "Now nah, I forgot what I was going to say." Um, son of a gun. Shane played that dumb drop, and I got thinking about the standard is the standard. Talking about it being a coaching problem when you can't see, we can only see what guys can't do. Oh, fuck. There's a lot of stuff he says that, that, that sounds a lot alike. Oh, my gosh. This is, keep going. Uh, it'll come to me. So, I mean, basically where, I'm trying to go with this and land the plane here is if you're going to bet on something, regardless of it's high school, college, NFL, regardless of sport, the thing you should probably bet on. And the reason that you're so bullish on coach rule and, and Mike Tomlin and whoever else, the reason I don't like a guy like Dion, the reason I'm not totally sure on the sustainability. I like Fleck and you don't. I respect what Fleck does. I would just like him to buy some pants that fit. That would be my big thing there. Um, 
<laughs> but if you're going to bet on something, I think regardless of sport, regardless on level, it's going to be guys that are able to manage emotions, not only of their teams, but of themselves. And what you're really betting on there is culture. Mm. That's bet on it brought to you by Warhorse Sportsbook. Sportsbook.